All right, last story, Brandon. Um, oh, FDR, what were you talking about? All right, so yeah, uh, there's this crazy situation that happened. You guys ever hear the guy, a guy named Smedley Butler? I have heard Smedley. General? Is he a general? Yeah, so in, um, in the early Smedley. 90- who, never thought, who the hell names their kid Smedley? Like, I guess they knew he was going to be so cool they give him the most ridiculous name ever and they'd still be a badass. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Smedley. Like, he was basically looked at like how Captain America was looked at in the early 1900s. So 34 years in military, uh, one of only 19 veterans to receive two medals of honor mm. uh, in the Spanish-American War, Philippine War, Boxer Rebellion, Banana Wars, and Nicaragua War, and Mexican-Haitian War, World War One. So just his entire life. In He's combat. a beast. And, like, known for, you know, doing these crazy missions and stuff that are, like, John Wick type of things, whatever. So Army? Was the Army? Yeah, uh, Marines. Marines, got you. So real badass of a guy. And in 1933, there's this thing called the business plot. So I think... Um, now would be a good time to go to that video. Oh, can we show this? Yeah. So play this. So what, what, what do we want to watch? So this is, he alleges that um, a group of Wall Street people came up to him and were trying to get him to overthrow FDR with a coup of 500,000 military people who are U.S. military people who are pissed off about not getting paid from World War World War One. Oh, snap. Yeah. So, okay, so let's play this video. This is Smedley Butler. Smedley! I appeared before the Congressional Committee the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. The plan as outlined to me was to form an organization of veterans, to use as a bluff or as a club at least, to intimidate the government and break down our democratic institutions. The upshot of the whole thing was that I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men which would be able to take over the functions of government. I talked with an investigator for this committee who came to me with a subpoena on Sunday, November 18th. He told me they had unearthed evidence linking my name with several such veteran organizations. As it then seemed to me to be getting serious, I felt it was my duty to tell all I knew of such activities to this committee. My main interest in all this is to preserve our democratic institutions. I want to retain the right to vote, the right to speak freely, and the right to write. If we maintain these basic principles, our democracy is safe. No dictatorship can exist with suffrage, freedom of speech, and press. Nice. So he goes to Congress and testifies before them, says that people like J.P. Morgan, the DuPont family, like like naming names. Holy crap. And a lot of the names stayed classified. But so long story short, he goes to Congress, like, you know, super reputable guy. Everybody loves him, most beloved guy. Two freaking medals of honor. Yeah. Yeah. And you go back from that because the the way he got to Congress is really interesting. What do you mean the way he got to Congress? Oh, like how they got organized and why. The people, the people, the people, you mean like the J.P. Morgan people and all yeah. those guys? Like the committee? Yeah. Well, so he, no, so he he basically told on them and then appeared before Congress in a, a hearing called the um, McCormick uh, Dickerson Committee and told them all these things and said, like, yeah, these powerful people from Wall Street, these industrialists, they think that um, FDR is a socialist, which FDR was a socialist piece of shit who destroyed America in a large degree, like mm-hmm. severe repercussions of what he did with the new deal because you know that's where unions and um the social security stuff came from so real disastrous but these people they tried to like use fascist like uh tactics to take him out because this is when mussolini and hitler were also rising up too so this is like kind of coming from that same line of thinking but um the overarching theme of this is that like they keep using this term fascist for trump but this is how a fascist takes over and i I want to ask you guys, like, off the top of your head, do you think there's a clear distinction between the term socialism and fascism? If there's a distinction between... Like, socialism and fascism... You, you'd almost they, consider yeah, them on, a, on opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah, like I would you, think that they're like, completely different, right? Fascism is is just... W- w- with how they're currently used. Like, Wait, what? fascism, you're, you're a... You're a far right lunatic who wants to overthrow the government, and if you're a socialist, you're a far left. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's how they, how, that's that's how how they I, use the words. Yeah, but I've always maintained that there's absolutely no difference between these two definitions, and it's like really funny to me that like people on the left call people on the right they don't like fascists, and people on the why. right. Tell me well, well, you know what Nazi is an acronym for, right? National Socialist Workers Party. Like it's not like there was tell, much of. Tell a me why you think they're the same. So I'm really let, curious. All right, so let's read the definitions quick. So a fascist is a government system led by a dictator having complete power, forcibly suppressing opposition, criticism, 
Re um, regimenting all industry commerce, emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often racism. Okay. So that's national uh, fascism, then socialism, a theory or so uh, system of social organization that advocates ownership and control of the means of production and distribution by the community as a whole, usually through a centralized government. So, like, socialism in real time, an example of that is what Venezuela is doing. You know, they organized, like, they, they call the means of production, they say it's through the people, but, uh, like, the people are owning it through the centralized government. So, it's just a different term for a dictatorship. Well, so, so let me just get, make sure I'm, I'm correct. For yeah. Yep. So, fascism is a dictator government that determines X, Y, and Z, how we run our like country, means who of production. gets means of production, who gets what. And socialism is a group that acts like a dictator and chooses all those things. Well, they say that everything belongs to the people, but the means of distribution is run through the centralized government. So Which not. is that specific group that's running it. So it's the a group with yeah, one way ideology. Yeah, with, with a leader who could also be called a dictator. Same shit. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. I mean, Interesting. like the, the inability to define fascism is, is so, crazy right now because everyone just throws that word around. Like that was a very specific thing. Like fascist is a specific identity. And it started Italian fascism. Like the Nazis weren't fascists. The Nazis were a different thing. The Italians were fascists. And then the way that that's been rolled over now, anyone who's slightly to the left of 1996, Bill Clinton, is a fascist. It's like you can't accurately define the word anymore, so it's so, lost all meaning. So are you calling out the irony that the left and the right, well, the left is saying that the right is fascist, but they believe in socialism, which is the same thing. Well, I'm I'm kind of making like a, a few points at the same time. One of them being that yes, like they're they're trying to call Trump a fascist, but mm -hmm. uh, I think fascism, socialism are the same thing. And this is what a fascist takeover looks like. And then this next slide, what is, is what, this is what, is what a what fascist takeover looks like? The Smedley Butler thing. I, that, I, I, that's I, that's I, what an attempt yeah. looks like. No, and no, then, but I absolutely that, disagree that a fascism and socialism is the same thing. They're they're identical. Even no, Brandon. Because if you, if you grab if you grab the economic policies, okay, yes, they're similar because they're seizing of the means of production, but the objectives of both things are completely different. Like socialism, it ends in a in, it goes a to utopia. Yeah, yeah, it goes to communism, and, and, and so they have no purpose other than destroying whatever there whatever there is there. Like if there's a kind of people like the German people, they want everyone to be equal, everyone apart, and they they're internationalists, you know, socialist. Yeah, socialists. It's, it, that's why you have. You still have the the socialist internationalists. They just made a statement uh, supporting Kamala Harris. Yeah. Okay, so it's a, it's a whole different thing. It's 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 a. It, they, it has I mean, the the purposes. end promise is a different thing, but the means to get there is not different. I mean, I, I they never you, make it to that end stage. Uh -huh. You've stumbled onto the the horseshoe model of of political philosophies, where it's not two extreme ends. It's actually you know like a horseshoe shape, yeah. where if you go far enough to either extreme, you kind of end yeah, up back place. approaching the same point of complete centralized government authority, uh, suppression of industry, suppression of free speech and opposition. You arrive at that under communists and so uh, and fascists. They, I, and I, I kind of agree with Humberto that they, they can't be the same thing because historically you've seen conflict between communists and fascists. Like the uh, first, only real uh, difference is nationalism. No, 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 no. But, but, but I, what, uh, what the, the conflict I, I think best exemplifies it is uh, the Spanish Civil War with uh, Generalissimo Franco, who was against communists. And he, he's part of where the global hatred of uh, fascism comes from, because it wasn't a universally loathed ideology until he successfully defeated a communist uprising. Because what the communists were doing, when you look at what was going on in Spain before the Civil War, when they took over, they were raping and killing nuns, burning down churches. Like, they were truly committing acts of like horrible atrocities across Spain. Yeah. Franco committed horrible atrocities against communists in response. So it's not a good thing, but you see this conflict where but that's even not if they arrive that's at a similar point. That's not because they're, they're different. It's because it's a sales pitch for somebody else to try to take no, no, power no, no, and no. say, they, they, hey, that person's Brandon, a socialist. Brandon, this, Brandon, fascism's Brandon. right because... Brandon, let's, let's analyze this. Like, <laughs> if, you, if you will, like, I know the hill you will die on is globalist against other people. You, you, your first guys, bad guys well, on the list. Are globalist. globalist is one world government. But, but that's so, yeah, why that's why fascism 
it has on the top of the list get rid of communist and get rid of globalism and it has on the top With of the a list dictator fascism must be well, ultra nationalist I mean, in order to yeah, function i mean the, the, so like the, it, it is by yeah. definition the opposite of globalism yeah no just the nationalist part yeah the nationalist part but, is different than what, the internationalism you, of if, socialism if you judge it if you judge by economic policies that same that, exact thing it, it's very similar but if you judge by intent, by goals... But when by, have they ever gotten to the end goal that they promised? They Never. Did. They did. Oh. Uh, the Mussolini got almost to the end goal. That almost. He, he is, well, because the, the whole world... The whole world yeah, but when, when you look at who they lose to, yeah. it's communists. Yeah, like the, 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 yeah because it's a different sales pitch. It, it is the give and take of communism and fascism. I can't, and I can't believe that, I'm, that I'm is defending the, fascism. Yeah, I'm not, but, <laughs> I, I'm not here to defend it. But, but, right but, but, but listen, listen, my disdain for socialism <laughs> is so big that anyone that is not a socialist, like I, I will or, try. Uh, Humberto, uh, Pinochet. Huh? Pinochet, throwing, throwing communists guy. out of helicopters. Pinochet was not a good guy. He was He falls under the category of fascism. Yeah, but he successfully, it, more or less, fought against a communist uprising. But but you know what Italy looked like versus what Russia looked like, or what Nazis looked like versus what Russia looked like, same exact thing. Yeah, because it's a horseshoe, and you end up back at the same right. point. Exactly. But but it's just two, a different sales pitch. The horseshoe does have the two sides, but where no, you end up. But listen, at, there but that's with just different talk, though. Like listen, the, yeah. the promise listen. is different, but the outcomes are the same. Brandon, the 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 the, the like. Germany before World War II was in the biggest economic crisis in the planet. I know the Weimar okay? Republic and 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 fascism turned that around. Oh boy! Like in <laughs> Russia, in Russia, people were dying of hunger. So you're saying fascism fascism is the only way they could have turned it around? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But I, I just have this thing for socialists that is is is. But I am saying that the most effective thing to stop a communist uprising is a military dictatorship. So far. I don't necessarily care Nothing, for it. No, that's, but I, that's, it that's, that's what thing. I'm saying. Different sales pitch. Look at, but, look at but, what but, is saving but, El Salvador Kelly. right now. <laughs> but, but Kelly has her okay. hand. Kelly, go ahead. I've, okay. I'm pretty smart. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I don't know. Which I'm, means the I, audience I think, is lost. No, no, no. no I think our audience is pretty smart. And a lot like you guys, I'm not, I'm not necessarily the norm. But for anybody in our audience that might be lost, tell me why the fuck I should care about the difference between fascism and socialism right now as it pertains to our upcoming election and what no. they're saying about Trump. Do you guys remember this article from 2020 that comes out like a few weeks after the election that's bragging the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election? What the hell? So you, don't, you don't remember that? That, gra secret? that graphic is, oh, is this legendary. Is time? This is where they, yes. you know, they talked about the... It, the the Basically. shadowy cabal rigged the election, but it's a good thing, and you should say thank you. Yeah, holy. Remember, holy. they didn't they didn't rig it; they fortified it. So what that, they admitted huh. to. So that's a more subtle way of doing what they tried to do in 1933. You know, like the shadowy forces were behind the scenes were doing the things that were necessary to make the end result that they wanted, which oh. you know we think was uh, messing with the numbers on the on the election. But point being, anybody who wants to be a dictator, it doesn't matter if you're fascist, socialist, like it's the same thing, slightly different terminology with the promise of it, but same outcome. Like you never get to the end promised result of, of socialism or fascism. Like they always promise a utopia, but it never gets there. And the same means are used to do both of them. I, uh, Brandon, the only cure for socialism and communism that we've seen work is violence. There, there, there's no way out. Organized military violence is the only thing that can take a country like South Korea, like Chile, like every country. You can take socialism out with democracy. Who, who, yeah, who's so the, if they have guns, yeah, you need guns to do it. Yeah. But if you if you don't have uh, if they don't have guns and they don't have their own military, then you just need a free market to stomp out socialism. Real quick, which world leader would you guys say you've most often heard called a fascist besides Trump? Hitler. I mean, like, like current world leader, like who's who's active right now. That oh, um, you're described as Bukele. El Salvador. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And El Salvador, Nayib Bukele came into a country overrun by gangs. Yep. Locked up like one percent of the population and dropped the murder rate by like seventy percent. Yeah. He has been called a fascist because he's being effective, and it is a violent solution to drag back the problem caused by globalist liberalism philosophies. And I'm not saying everything Bukele does is good. I've heard plenty of people discuss how he's actually some kind of plant himself. I, I need to do more digging on that, but I, there's plenty of reason to be skeptical of what he's doing. But if you're an average person going about your daily life in El Salvador and you compare how your life is now to how it was like three, four years ago, it is infinitely better. 
You, you can walk down the street without being worried about getting gunned down by MS-13 because every member of MS-13 is currently in prison or being forcibly marched into cemeteries to smash up the headstones of dead MS-13 members because it's illegal to have symbolism from the gang anymore. Well, if you have a fantastic dictator, then yeah, you could have a great situation, which you know it seems like Boo Kelly is doing everything mm -hmm. on the right way. But you know the problem with that is like once you get a bad dictator, then things go horribly. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. So well, that, that's the thing. Dictator extreme, isn't bad. Extreme measures inherently. are. What dictator isn't bad inherently? Roman dictator. No, it's Roman, great. Like the, the, well, but the, it was a coin flip though. If they were going to be a great leader or somebody who just killed people for fun. Yeah, but the root of, the root of dictator is dictate. It was the whole point was in Making times of crisis they would appoint a dictator to yeah, dictate what they would do for six yeah, months. The, the problem is that once Caesar declared himself dictator for life, that was it. it ended the republic. Right, but. The Republic was so terrible that by the time Caesar did it, it was a step in the right direction. Yeah, like El Salvador. Be because every form of government, the, the assumption is that it will be virtuous in order to be effective. So a virtuous dictator is way better than a corrupt democracy. Hmm. What? If, 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 if you, if you have a, if you have so. a democratic system where, so. where the entire thing is corrupt, you can replace it with a virtuous the whole dictator. Point of democracy. No, but you grew. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, we're technically a constitutional republic. Well, go ahead, say what you're going to say. Yes, you're right. That's but the whole important. point of a democracy yeah, yeah. is that every person has a responsibility for that government. So the whole thing's corrupt, and it's on you. But we can't control a one person. Like, there's we're we have responsibility, and this goes into faith. This goes into like morality in general. Like, we have a responsibility to do the right thing, and we also have free will. We have freedom. That's what our, the one of the biggest cornerstones of our country. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, no, and the I mean the fact that people are ultimately going to be corrupt. Like you can't just assume that a dictator is going to be great. Like even like Bukele has the potential to turn bad. Because I mean, was he been there for three years so far? Yeah, yeah. And so the, the mean, assumption that they're not going to turn bad is naive. You, yeah, you have to everybody. Does. You have to, corrupt, and that's absolutely. why. That's Which is why, why I also believe that a democracy, if it was corrupt, would eventually get itself out of it because everybody would have, you know, a revolution. Right, you they get fed up it. with it. They had the power um, to change it. I, I don't want to sound like I'm contradicting Kelly on that point because I, I agree with you. And yeah. because the assumption of virtue is not guaranteed, you have to have something decentralized enough in, to change it. And right. It's, it's more difficult to get out a corrupt dictator than it is to get out a corrupt democracy. Yes. But in the, in the ideal sense, like he, this goes back to Plato, where he wrote about his ideas of you know, the ideal form of government. It was a virtuous philosopher king, someone who was wise and virtuous and also had the authority to be effective by himself. And that's like so overly optimistic. Like, were you going to make uh, that course, person in, in is, the lab or something? He was discussing the... The ideal form of it. Yeah. Uh, we have things like democracy, republic, because we can't rely on things being virtuous forever. But the, the whole reason we got on the dictator point, Humberto brought it up. The most effective way to get rid of the communist takeover historically has been the rise of an effective military dictatorship. And that's the give and take that you're discussing there. But like a. And I think we should save the rest of that conversation for next time. Always the producer. When Kelly's not. No, no, I need to make a few disclaimers. I'm not a fascist. I'm not a apologetic. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I just, I just like time. busting Unless Brandon's you your balls. Because, yeah. you want, because you want the inheritance uh, from your that up. What if you go viral for being a fascist today? I'm, well, I am so not a fascist, <laughs> I swear. According I to the modern definition, we're all fascists. I do really appreciate you guys because like watching you guys have this conversation educates me a lot. Um, we just ran out of time. Guys, he's not a fascist. He's a fascinist. Look fashionist. at his jacket. Listen, a fashionista. Hey, fashionista. I know. Fas Latino. <laughs> but um, guys, great conversation. I mean, guys, I was just sitting back. <laughs> eating some popcorn. And I, just, and I was just like, I, I was just going to say I concur a couple of times. <laughs> Good. I wanted you guys to have it out. But um, thank you guys, everybody at home, for watching. By the way, and I'm just, while, as we're just sitting here, um, oh, breaking, yeah. breaking. Uh-oh. Uh, the Lancaster mm. County Board of Elections just announced they've uncovered a major voter fraud scheme in Pennsylvania. Wow. Wow, wow. guys. Look it up for yourselves. Okay. According to the board, up to 2,500 fraudulent voter registration applications were dropped off in two batches shortly before the deadline. <laughs> oh, my God. But I thought Democrats said voter fraud was a hoax. Oh, my goodness. And now it's happening 
In it's real time. In a swing state, in a battleground state. Oh, wait. And or, it's ne if it's happening some one place, it's happening in other places. Wow, and the so authorities believe... Are they, they going to count those? Or? I mean, I mean, they're, yeah, they're Democrats. They had to do it there because that's the state where Trump worked at the McDonald's. Yeah, so of course. He won Pennsylvania after Yeah, after and authorities that. believe an organization is behind this fraud. The district attorney has vowed to investigate and hold them responsible. <laughs> Weird. And it's going to happen. It's going to keep happening. So, guys... Be vigilant. Um, go vote. Go vote. I was just going to say that. Go and freaking vote for where you want this country to be. Hey, if you want men in women's bathrooms, if you want an open border, if you want capital, what is it, the unrealized gains taxes, you yeah, want all the guys. Nation. If you want us to fail, go vote for Kamala Harris. Yes. You want what we had. No, no, no. Vote for Trump. If you <laughs> want freedom, if you want this place to freak. Guys, it's hang hanging out by a thread. Vote for Trump. Vote, vote accordingly. But hey, but hey, it's on you. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna force you to do it.